So now if you notice here, they see this squishy, right? That's sort of in the open. They see the Zen up here. So they decide to actually push. So this right over here will happen a lot when you're playing ball comp. An enemy team might be like, uh, an enemy brawl team might be like, hey, there's, there's a non-mobile person over here. Oh, there's a Zen here. Oh, there's an Ana here. And they'll just sort of like int on you. And it's really, really, really important when you're playing a uh, ball comp and you have sort of, you know, squishies or non-mobile people that you're playing max distance. You're playing really, really, really far away. And the next thing I'll even add on top of that is don't be afraid when you lose somebody. You can always trade, right? Like if, if they go in and they maybe kill your Ash, your Ash dies. Well, when that happens, hopefully your ball can go in and like displace their team and then, you know, slam. And then your Tracer can maybe try and kill the BAP. All right. So today we are going to be talking about Brawl. Uh, whoops. No. Go back a second and redo that because we're not talking about brawl we're talking about ball versus brawl <laughs> uh this is a bit weird okay so today we're gonna be talking a little bit about ball comp versus brawl and sort of how to like win that matchup uh, i've got an example from contenders falcon esports versus uh bh and i think that was a pretty good example of how falcon actually was playing brawl insanely well and what uh, i think bh could have done better so they could have actually won the map um but before we get into that i'm going to quickly talk a little bit about just generally ball comp so generally ball comp is ball uh diva or sigma um diva or sigma uh ash or echo or maybe sometimes sombra um tracer or oh, i'm running out of room Tracer, Brig or Mercy, uh, and Zen. Sorry. Um, and essentially, right? Let me make sure I'm also not running over my picture. Okay, I'm good. Um, now, because we're playing against Brawl, we really want to maximize the number of mobile people we have, so it's hard for the enemy team to actually kill somebody. So instead of this particular composition, what is a little bit more ideal is like running Ball Diva. Even set of sigma, so they can't run it down. And then you want spam-based heroes because you're not. You can try it out brawl brawl with ball comp, but in general, going a more spam-based comp is probably a bit better. So running something like Ash, or Echo, um, or even Hanzo, is quite good. With and then you normally want some constant damage, so getting a tracer so you can follow up on stuff, and then a Mercy because it's mobile and it damage boosts with angles, uh, and Zen because you have Discord and then again more damage. Um, some variations might include, instead of this, uh, you just have two spam-based heroes, so you'd have, like, an Ash, um, Ash, Echo, Hanzo, uh, and you'd have maybe two of these, so you'd have, like, Ash and Echo, or maybe you have Echo, Hanzo, and you just have the Mercy, Zen, Ball, Diva, and you just have two spam heroes, and so Ball doesn't really have, a, like, a Tracer to play with, but in this situation, you just have a lot more spam damage, so you can sort of take angles and essentially pressure the Brawl team from, uh, you know, different angles and essentially force brawl cds really early on um you could run farah uh i'm personally not the biggest fan of farah and the reason why i'm not the biggest fan of farah is because when you run farah you normally need a mercy and then your comp normally has to play around the farah so that your farah gets value and i think it's if the enemy team it's sort of like greedy in my opinion unless you've like an insanely good farah the enemy team uh the brawl team sort of knows how to play around fair than how to deny farah then it's going to be insanely hard for you to get value and i think if you're also running a farah you want an onyx because i think nano farah is really strong for retake um but so i'm just not fully for it because again i think it's a little greedy but if you have a good farah you can definitely try it uh so i thing i'll also mention is the compositions based off what you want to play are definitely map dependent so if you've got a high ground map like dorado uh, you don't necessarily need you know a tracer you could just play like ash echo and sort of just hold the high grounds and ball and diva can sort of stall point and your ash uh, echo sort of just poke from different angles and eventually force lamp and get people really low because sticky's dynamite and then ball slam you can sort of imagine with discord you can just get kills um or you can even imagine on like temple of anubis first point uh, you sort of play like on the high grounds of point and bait the brawl team to play point and they go point and you're sort of just spamming them from high grounds and you're sort of just again ball diva are sort of just like touching point and just buying time uh one at a time ball goes in uh then goes out diva drops then diva flies up and when ball goes in diva probably dms the ball so ball doesn't take as much damage ball has shift two or not shift e um 
So that's sort of the concept, right? Is you want to sort of win over time. All right, so let me sort of go into now what are the basic like ball comp win conditions. We'll do a little bit more over here. Ball comp win cons. I'm also sort of going to go into what brawl win cons are, like the brawl win, win cons are into ball so that you can sort of understand hopefully the logic and sort of understand how to play the matchup a little bit better. Um, but in basic sense, you want angles versus brawl. You want, uh, you want a, essentially normally like a long fight. Uh, the longer it is, normally the better it is. Longer is like better. Uh, and when I say angles, you want to just be really wide. And I'll show an example of it a little bit later. Um, you want to definitely go for displacement because when they're all together, uh, it brawl normally is Ryan Diva, uh, May, McCree, Lucio, Bap, and sometimes maybe Tracer or something else. But if they're all together, then Bap gets a lot of value because it's easier for him to heal. But if it gets split, um, then it's harder for like the Diva to peel people or the Tracer, uh, not Tracer, the uh, Lucio or Bap, the Lucio to like peel, uh, like you know, pressuring a Tracer or the Bap to just heal everyone. Uh, another thing is you normally want to try and focus squishies. Uh, focus squishies. Squishies are people at 200 HP. Um, and you normally want to, those squishies normally want to have like non livable CDs. So, what I mean by non livable CDs is like a bad example would be like May, because May has cryo, unless you're trying to force cryo for some reason. But May has cryo. Um, Reaper has like Wraith, so Reaper will just live. Moira has like Fade. So stuff like that, it's really hard to kill because you just force the they won't die. But a better example would be something like um, McCree. You hit hit McCree, he's got no level CDs, and then he's sort of squishy and non-mobile. Um, no, so we also need to add non-mobile here. Whoops. Squishies and uh, non-mobile CDs. Sorry for my handwriting, <laughs> but um, yeah, McCree, uh, Ana, even though Ana's nade, it's not that much. Hanzo has very limited mobility in my opinion. Um, so those are some ones like that you can really like watch and sort of try and pressure. Um, okay, so the other thing also is you sort of want something called kill boxes and I'll like, hopefully you've seen a basic ball video of mine. If not, you can go watch one, but kill boxes are basically like engagement zones and you want to really understand where the enemy team is rotating and sort of just have these kill boxes to engage on them when they go. And uh, you don't necessarily need to like rush. You can have well, you can kill, hit them once, and you can also hit them again. You don't need to like be like, oh, I need to keep hitting them. Like I'm gonna hit them and then go into them. No, you like I'll give you an example right now of like a map where you can sort of sort of play a little slow at the start and hit them once, force lamp and you know some other CDs, and then you can hit them again. So for instance, on this map, if the enemy team is on brawl and they're sort of rotating, you know these are some of the paths they can take. Uh, if they go here, they can go like that, go like that. Uh, yeah, these are like the basic ones. There's some higher level ones where you can actually technically go over here and may wall up. Um, but, uh, and there's some, you know, there also a may wall up like this, technically, if you go like that, or you can go in here. Um, but in general, wherever they go, there's like a kill box here, kill box here. Um, there's a kill box over here, kill box here, kill box here. Um, so what I'm getting at is, in general, if you're noticing the first time, you'll be able to sort of hit them once right over here. And then the second time you'll be able to hit them based off where they go, because they have to get on you, their brawl will be somewhere like over here. And what that's good is because the first time you hit them, hopefully you can force lamp and maybe like cryo or some other abilities. And then next time you hit them, they won't have lamp, so You can sort of get more value. Um, so that's why I said, don't rush. You don't need necessarily you just need to like, like int after you sort of like hit them once you can sort of chill and then hit them again. Um, and the other thing I'd also say is if the enemy team decides to like force cart, you've got all the time in the world. If you have a tracer, your tracer can stall point because you have Zen Orb. You can give Zen Orb to your tracer, tracer can stall point. Your ball can go stall point and you can just keep spamming them because if the cart's over here, you have this much time. And if you're, con if you're just like, you know, you can just poke here, tracer can go stall a little bit, keep poking. Hopefully if you just play this correctly and just control the high ground, by the time the cart's roughly over here, you should hopefully have forced a lot of CDs, preferably by here. And then here you can sort of just get value. Because again, if you just think about a dynamite, discord, plus ball slam and a little tracer follow-up, somebody's gonna die. Okay, back to this here. Um, where's cool. So now I wanna talk about like, for all win conditions. And this is a little bit more different and a little bit more high level. So I'll show you an example from contenders of sort of what uh, Falcons did. Uh, they have an amazing head coach and assistant coach, uh, Faustus and um, iHeart. Uh, so definitely check them out if you haven't. They're both very smart people. 
uh, and hopefully will be an owl soon. They definitely deserve it. But so uh, brawl, so brawl like wincon um, versus brawl, ah uh, versus ball. So in for this your wincon essentially is a few things. So you want to basically position. Uh, I'm gonna go back so I can have a little better more space. I want to position where you take minimal uh minimal poke from angles okay and i'll give you an example of that in a second and it'll make a lot more sense once i do i understand the high level concept is you want to position somewhere where you can take a minimal poke from angles and you can essentially like uh you can sort of like support uh you can like support not you support let's say like you plus you can like force point if you want to force point because then you can force a brawl or um if you don't have map control already if you do have map control or you can have some type of like map control okay uh so now you might ask yourself okay so you're in a position and you know into some corner or some area where you're not taking a lot of poke from some angles but then you also you're trying to force point how do you do that or who does that so in terms of forcing point when you're playing brawl uh your diva and may can do that and they don't actually be together um but they can sort of hold different angles and then they can definitely force point um and then while that's happening right your your rest of your core your ryan um whoops your ryan Ryan, McCree, Lucio, Bap. So your Bap can heal them. Your McCree will look to poke like enemy ball or any flankers. Your Ryan essentially will be a bodyguard for uh, McCree and sort of just give him a free shield so he can poke and just build his ultimate. And while this is happening, your Bap is also building window so you can eventually push off window because you don't want to just stay there forever, but you could stay there forever as long as you help your May, your Diva May. Um, and then your May's job, which is quite interesting, is because you know in brawl you're very worried about displacement is your mage job is to really try and hard deny ball is really to deny ball and um your diva's job like i said is to help the main dm uh your mage job also is to live on point because you have cryo uh plus you have may wall which can like wall off a bob or wall off any sort of situation i guess you can sort of wall off an enemy high noon you can wall off um let's say the enemy team i think of a good example they have a sigma and they're spamming you or the mines come in and you need to sort of just wall it off and sort of chill or better yet the enemy team is taking an aggressive angle and you just need to wall off that angle and live for a little bit and get some bat heals you could wall it off right so it's sort of just being able to live or you could wall off aggressively and push it right you can do best of both worlds um so let's see what else i'm missing here uh I think I can keep talking about this, but the best way again to think about it is you sort of want to play slow at the start and like control space, control some smart space, control smart space. And then when you have some type of advantage, you can push, right? Um, otherwise you sort of like deny, hardcore deny. Okay, so let me give you an example. Let's go and sort of watch, uh, let's sort of watch what Falcon sort of did. And we'll talk about how it should be countered. Okay, so here, I'm going to keep it on mute so there's not a lot of sound. But at the start, you can notice here, um, we're playing Ruins, and Falcons Esports immediately goes into this sort of area, which, to be honest, normally looks really weird. But if you actually logically think about this point right over here, you'll see it in a second, that's a nutty kill. But you think about it, this wall right here denies the enemy team, right? Like the only way that BH can actually do damage is from here or here, which is like pretty good. Why? Because that can just be shielded off. And if the ball or someone pushes in here, guess what? That's a free wall. So essentially in this enclosed area, you can sort of block a lot of the angles and you can force point because your D.Va or May can go point and your Bab can just heal that. So it's a very like smart spot that your team can play and you can sort of live. And now, obviously, they killed Tracer, which is huge. And now they can sort of stabilize, force point, 
and just live. So you sort of see the diva sort of over pressuring, you know, the ball a little bit. Yes, they got dynamited, but it doesn't matter because you can just bap shift and, and heal. The enemy team can't push in because if they do, they'll just get stunned. The diva won't really go in there um, because it's they'll just get like frozen if the maze there. The maze not there right now. Now, if you notice here, right, Falcon sees an opportunity to push, and this is what I want to talk about, right? What BH did wrong here is if you actually logically think about Falcon's setup, as I mentioned right over here, they're they're, they're safe from a certain angle. I'm trying to, there. They're safe from this angle right over here, and that's where the Zen and Ash is. It's really, 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 really important when you're playing ball comp, you need to get aggressive angles so you can surround them. And I call it webbing, like taking multiple different angles and sort of surround them. So the Zen really needs to posture somewhere like all the way over here. And the Ash, again, needs to be really wide. Then these guys in here won't be able to do much because they're going to like, th this won't work. Obviously, yes, they can maybe turn and flip the map, but that's still going to be difficult because then these guys can just rotate. And if you think about it as well, the people on point are going to struggle more because they're going to get direct shot at. And the way to think about it as well is you don't necessarily even need to stack your Ash and your Zen together. You could put your Ash over here, you could put maybe your Zen over here, and now you've got two range damage dealers like from different angles. Okay. So BH doesn't really do this, and they sort of like put their damage dealers in the same angle. And because of this, you know, they're just like their their damage is like very minimal. You can look here, like it's very low. Obviously, hybrid's got a lot of damage because of dynamite. But if you look at Grathin, May, and even Exorath, right? They're they're building a lot more alt a lot faster. So now if you notice here, they see this squishy, right? That's sort of in the open. They see the Zen up here. So they decide to actually push. So this right over here will happen a lot when you're playing ball comp. An enemy team might be like, uh, an enemy brawl team might be like, hey, there's, there's a non-mobile person over here. Oh, there's a Zen here. Oh, there's an Ana here. And they'll just sort of like int on you. And it's really, really, really important when you're playing a uh, ball comp and you have sort of, you know, squishies or non-mobile people that you're playing max distance. You're playing really, really, really far away. And the next thing I'll even add on top of that is don't be afraid when you lose somebody. You can always trade, right? Like if, if they go in and they maybe kill your Ash, your Ash dies. Well, when that happens, hopefully your ball can go in and like displace their team and then, you know, slam. And then your Tracer can maybe try and kill the BAP or can kill someone else. Preferably the BAP or Kree. Those are the people that make the most sense because they're easy, right? Uh, May will cryo, Diva is hard, Lucio, a little difficult, Ryan's tank. So, you know, you can kill them. And then at the end of the day, you have a Mercy, so you can res later. And because normally everyone's playing distance and not together, the Brawl team, after speed boosting on one target, right, will then have to go to another target that might be far away. And that's inherently difficult. So, again, if you see here, BH, everyone's sort of stacked, so it's not good. And if you notice here, the ball tries to go in, and what Seiko does is he immediately marks the ball, so the ball doesn't get value. And that's why I think it's very important, if you're playing ball comp, you need to make sure that you're pressuring the May more, so May's not able to deny ball this much. Because the ball gets sort of hard denied. So I'm going to show you, in my opinion, just a little bit more here, really fast. So again, if there's like a brawl comp over here, and there's like a diva and a May, right? Sort of have some positioning where you could keep your Ash over here, keep your Zen as sort of a bait. Um, I'd actually prefer, well, yeah, keep your Zen there. I prefer Ash technically here because Ash's coach kind of has more mobility, but it's fine. Um, oh, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Uh, we can do that. Okay. Um, then you can keep your ball over here. Let me do different colors so it's easier. Ash, Zen, ball. Tracer, another angle. Zen can orb Tracer. Ash, another angle. Mercy over here. Mercy can peel Zen. And then your Diva can sort of just play over here. And now you sort of got this sort of like little web type of thing. So you sort of can surround them. And you hold a lot of the map pressure, which is like really, really strong. And if, let's say, Brawl runs on the Zen, then, well, you know, your Ash can get value. Your Tracer can sort of pressure them. Your Ball can pressure them. If that, that Brawl team goes on, you know, your Ash, right, then the Zen can shoot. So it gets it gets a lot more difficult for them. And a higher level brawl team, what they might do is they might do split pushes, um, where they'll send maybe like a diva Lucio on one target, and then the rest of the team will push an Ash. But when this happens, right? Again, make sure you're just focusing one target, killing that target. Again, if you lose somebody, it's okay. It's totally okay. You can always res. Um, and at the end of the day, the longer the fight is, and the wider you play, and the farther you play, is always going to be good. Um, something else to note is you need, instead of pressing W and going into them, in, into a brawl team, preferably what you'd rather do is take like aggressive angles. 
So what I mean by that is, let's say these guys now rotate and they play like over here. Then, you know, what you'd rather do now is play more aggressive. So you maybe have your Zen go more over here to have a get a better wider LOS so they can shoot more. And then Ash again, maybe Ash goes even more aggressive and starts like playing over here or something. Probably not the best angle, but like get a really aggressive angle so you can like shoot them more and like basically make it so the environment cover they have becomes useless. And again, instead of going like in like this and getting the angle, go wide. So you maximize that distance so it's harder for them. Okay. Um... I think that's good. That's like a basic understanding of sort of like webbing and playing distance in different angles. Uh, in general, when you're playing, you want to try and have three angles is the way I sort of look at it. Uh, three angles at least, four is obviously great. But if you have three angles, it becomes you can peel each other and it's hard for them to deal with. Two angles is not enough because Diva can deny and May can deny. I um, mean, you've got Ryan Shield as well. Uh, so and May's only a wall, but you can still sort of soft deny. So you really need at least three angles. Okay. Uh. So, look at this. Let's sort of finish this, and we'll sort of like see how it plays out. Um, I'll talk a little bit about point control too. Um, so now you see they've got point again. They're sort of chilling. Uh, enemy bobs. They wall it off. Diva, uh, Diva, May are sort of just chilling on point. He cryos. He's living. Uh, Grathen gets a kill. And notice how the Ryan sort of helping to create. That's how Brawl's playing it. They're playing it pretty smart. Seiko's nuts. Gets a kill. Um, you know, notice the massive pocket on Seiko here. And they're just bat, bat heals, and then ball goes in, but ball just constantly getting denied because again, BH doesn't really have the angles to really pressure the BAP um, or pressure the May. Uh, and what's happening is they're getting the May low, but they can't really get the May to force cry. And once they do, the team is there to peel. So you need to really pressure the BAP to you know force lamp early, um, and then follow up on that. And the other thing to also realize is like. When you when the diva's over here and the maze over here, this is a decent chance for tracer and ball to try and hit this because there's less peels there. Um, obviously yes they have stun, but you also have a diva, but you don't have to commit your diva. It's a little a little bit harder. And also if you think about it, and when that happens, then that diva might peel, and when that diva peels, then your your uh, your squishies can rotate or move more because the diva doesn't have fly anymore. So now they're rotating, pushing back in. They use window, um, and they sort of take space. Hybrid kills dollar, dollar. Um, and again, they're sort of just playing this whole side. And again, you're sort of seeing uh, their <laughs> Ash is over here, Zen's there. They're not really taking angles. They're sort of just both forcing this spam main. And you see Tracer shooting from a little bit and Ball shooting from a little bit. But to be, fat, to be honest, that's like not like the massive damage dealers, right? Zen's a massive damage dealer. Ash is a massive damage dealer. And these guys need to go wide. And this is an example of like he's getting a lot of value here. And this is good, but like going wide and going more right would be like very beneficial. Okay, cool. Um, so I want to talk about this, right? So let's say you're playing Ball Comp and um, the enemy team, and we talked about kill boxes. So I'm actually going to use this here. So we talked about kill boxes and I want to talk about retaking and like holding point control. I think point. So in general, I hope you know that when you have point control as ball comp, it's super easy for you. It should inherently be a lot easier for you because you can set up how you want. You can set up the angles you want. The enemy team has to rotate through your kill boxes. So it's a lot harder for them. Um, so which is good for you, right? So if the enemy team like rotates like this, you know, or like here, so here, here. Like, you know, this works really well because you've got a kill box over here, you've got one here, and you've got one like sort of where you go point, wherever you go point, uh, there, uh, here, here, um, here. So what I'm getting at, right, is when you got point control, you can set up these multiple kill boxes, just like we showed on Iconwald, where you'll be able to force lamp here, then maybe like when they go to point, you know, you can actually kill them. And like I said, you can buy time, right, your backline can play pretty far back, um, you can chill, uh, you can set up how they did it, which I'll show you, which is really cool. Um, and you can force CDs early, and then later you can engage and go harder later. Um, what's really important though is you scout and you actually understand where they're coming from, so you set up to hit their core. And the other thing is sometimes you know brawl teams will be really sneaky, and they might send like a flanker over here while their core moves here, um, and then you guys don't see the flanker, and the flanker just kills people. Right, so you need to make sure that you're scouting properly. And if it's a solo flanker, guess what? That person's dead to like a, a ball a ball tracer. Or just a diva can maybe even kill it. Solo diva. So with Discord. Um, so just make sure you're scouting really well. One second. Uh, talked about kill boxes, care enemy baits. Uh, other thing, right? 
uh if the enemy team is rotating something that they might do which is very popular for brawl teams is they'll rotate out but they'll only send their tanks out to like bait your ball engage that way your ball only hits tanks which means guess what they only hit tanks the bap's not gonna land nothing's gonna happen and once that your ball hits and your tracer goes in then the brawl team will walk out and then that because your ball tracer has to cycle out and then the ball, ball team will walk out and then get value so you need to make sure actually when you're slamming you're actually getting the squishies don't just hit the tanks um and like i said before one of the biggest things that i'm going to keep emphasizing is longer the fight the better it is so don't unnecessarily try and just rush the point you have ball and tracer and diva all of which can stall point quite a lot if brawl goes to point and you you know you send your tracer on point first um you know with harmony orb they can stall then you know your ball goes point touches then they can stall then your diva goes like they can all they can sort of just like ping pong it one one after the other while your ash is taking an angle while maybe your zen's like taking another angle right if they just rush to point just take angles and stall point you'll win over time and as well you're building ultimates too and you can use those ultimates as well be, be also be aggressive with your ultimates you can use one ultimate at the start to force uh, cds and maybe they use an ult and then use another ult to try and finish make sure you're using like one ult to start a fight so don't be passive and like I said, also, is you want to always go wide. But if you have a break, you might want to actually W key and push into them. But that's if you have a break. Now, last thing, let's talk about um, if you're retaking. And I think this is probably one of the more tricky ones. Uh, if you're retaking with ball, uh, retaking with ball comp, brawl has a natural advantage. So it's really, really, really important. You're smart about how you do this. Why? If the brawl team would sort of just hold this choke here. Uh, it's not the right choke. Whoops right over here let's try it. the brawl team would try and hold this choke here and then maybe have like a diva hold over here um or on the high ground whatever uh and then you would sort of have to try and go in and again you want angles uh you want displacement you also sort of want split focus but i didn't mention earlier but you want split you want to split their focus so sending your ball plus tracer to point is always a good deal and that works but what can happen is the enemy brawl team might be say you know what we're gonna send our diva to soft contest point and maybe the bap will soft heal our diva and then the brawl team will just rush into you and when this happens your team could just die like your team could literally just like they could just run into your squishy uh like um, uh squishy could be your zen and like just blow up your zen so it's really important that you position a little bit further back but what's even more important is when you're retaking you scout you scout and ask yourself, where's the Ryan? Where's the May? Like, where are these people that are holding really close? Um, you know, wh where are they playing? Uh, if they're holding close, that means I know they're going to run on me. So as a squishy, I'm going to play further back and sort of chill. Obviously, if you have trance, that's great. You can play more aggressive and you can trance when they hit you. Um, but sort of play slow. Let your ball tracer hit point. Then when your diva uh, goes point, when their diva goes point, you try not to use a lot of CDs as ball and uh, tracer or as ball and tracer so that when the diva comes and flies to point you can then use your grapple and your and uh, your blinks to come back and then you push in and then you pinch you sort of sandwich the guys here and the biggest thing is wherever the may is and if you're going through a choke you want to try and go in a way where you hit the may so that may cryos and you know you don't get um uh you know you don't get walled off Okay. And obviously, if you have Ash, you can coach on high ground or you can take an angle. Echo is great as well because Echo can just start flying on the side and start poking. And like, if you poke, poke May enough, guess what? May is going to have to cry, which is great. And then you can push through. Po um, and then the other thing is like, Ryan is very hard to like force out. So if you start pressuring the BAP, uh, then Ryan is not going to get heals. And then BAP has to lamp. And then it gets really tricky. So pressuring the May and BAP is inherently actually stopping is stopping the Ryan from holding space and it's also stopping the May from walling which is again how you want to take space okay so hopefully this makes sense force point split focus take angles um, understand that they could rush you make sure you scout uh, also in general use alts to take space don't just sort of stand there uh, you can see over here BH sort of holds its high ground and they're really smart about it they have the ball on top they've got the tracer here this is when they're holding space not when they're retaking and if you notice here the ball comp right sort of just runs through but they weren't even ready and they try and get a hit but they didn't really get a hit and the brawl team forces point and the fact of the matter is it's because it's 99 and they beat and force point it's a little tricky for bh because they don't have a lot of time because they have to touch um and then again to be honest this may just gets insane amount of value and they also don't have any alts so it doesn't end up working well for them so you know falcons ends up winning and they played a really good brawl here but in summary um understand that brawl ball ball comp versus brawl is very doable 
understand your basic win cons angles distance um stalling point and hitting them getting valuable dynamites building bob pressuring their bap and may may so they doesn't they didn't screw over your ball bap so the heels are low uh and essentially hitting squishies hitting kree hitting bap hitting may uh may not as much but pressuring so the may can't freeze your ball when your ball goes in okay hopefully that was helpful